Hi there, and in this video I want to show you how you can code your games better, a little bit easier, using Autoload. This is probably something that you have already seen or heard of before, so the main aim of this video is that you are able to actually learn it, and not only learn it, but also start implementing it uh, in your projects. So the first situation in which you uh, may want to use an, an, an Autoload is when you want to play music. Because, for example, here I have my main menu, and when I press in this play button, I go to the main scene, okay? Um, so this, this tries to simulate a, an actual menu of a game, an actual, and the actual main scene in which the game would happen. Uh, so for example, I have my audio stream player node, that basically has a, an audio track that I have downloaded a, from Kenny, it is as simple as that. And it is going to play automatically as soon as the game starts. So if we do it like this, when I press the play button, the music will stop because the main scene has no access to the music, so it will stop playing. So there you have the problem. Now, which is the solution for this? To use an auto load. And in order to do this, what we need to create is a new scene that will always exist in any other thing, in, in any other scene. It will exist in the menu, it will exi exist in the main scene, etc. Because also, before doing this, what you may have also thought about is, okay, I can copy this node with control c and paste it over here with control v but this will uh, cause the following. As you can see, basically, the music is restart, because Firstly, the menu scene is played, the music starts to be played, but when we change to main scene, actually the music is reset, so it's not going to be played continuously in every single scene. So, of course, this is not the, the best solution. Um, so, uh, coming back to the previous things that, that I was telling you, we need to create an auto load scene. They are also called auto loads because they are indeed auto loaded as soon as the game starts and they will exist in any other scene that the game may contain so uh, what i can do is basically save this uh, right click first in this music node and save it as a scene okay and i will just save this in the music in the music folder because then we have another example that i want to show you and now this is basically a brand new scene but with this audio stream player that i showed you at the beginning now what i want to do is to delete this because, as I told you, an auto-load scene is going to be automatically instantiated or loaded in as soon as the game starts. So, as soon as Godot loads, Godot, what we'll do is this, okay? So, we don't want to do it, Godot will do it automatically. Now, we go to Project, Project Settings, and in Globals, in Auto-load, we can select the actual music scene, that it is this one, and Add, okay? Now, let's see the result. So as you can see, the music was played correctly, and let me show you the following. I will uh, momentaneously uh, just uh, disable the autoplay, because if not with the audio in the background it's going to be a little bit complicated to talk. Uh, but here in the remote tab, we can see the following. We have the menu scene, and there automatically we have the music scene, with the audio stream player and everything. And now, for example, if I go to the uh, main scene, as you can see, I am in the main scene, and this music uh, scene uh, continues existing, okay? So, there we have it. Now, for the second example, let me close this. It's basically to uh, not to auto-load a scene, as we have done with the music, but to auto-load a script. Let me show you the problem that we may have here. Of course, this is applied to different uh, cases in this case this this would be for a player health of course there are many ways of uh, preserving this data between between scenes but well uh, i will open he here the remote tab again so uh, what well i do have here the music at the background so let's not auto load it so that we don't get confused so now we shouldn't see the auto load over there the, the music auto auto loaded i mean 
and well the, i have three scenes and when i click next this goes to auto load 2 then in auto load 2 we will go to auto load 3 from auto load 3 it will go back to auto load 1 so and when i press here enter as you can see this would simulate a player health or any variable for example let's say that in auto load 1 or in level 1 we have 74 of health and when i go to level 2 now the health is being restarted uh, and let's say that i want to decrease it once again and in level 3 the health is being reset once again and if i come back to level 1 as you can see or level 2 or level 3 as you can see they're always being reset if you want to take a look at the code it is super simple i just have well the next scene that i want to load in once the button is pressed i also have like a super simple health variable and basically when the ui accepts action is pressed that is basically the enter or the spacebar in our keyboard the health is decreased and the health label text is updated as simple as that so basically what happens is that uh, this variable uh, basically you have one variable in auto load one another completely different in auto load two and another completely different in auto load three even though they have the exact same auto load one scripts attached so once again how can we fix this and this is with an auto load but in this case we just want to auto load a script so uh, i will create a new script over here by right clicking create new script and usually these are called game managers game handler global whatever uh, i i really like to use global so i will just use that one i will disable the template and here I have my global script so here I can store any data that I want to be accessed um, in any scene. So in this case, I want this health variable. So there I will have it. Okay, and of course, when I do this, I will get a lot of errors over here because I'm trying to access a variable that it is not declared in the current scope. So uh, what we do is once again, go to globals and here we want to auto load only this script. Okay, auto load global. And with this name that we have over here, we're going to be able to access it as a global variable, okay, to access any data. So instead of, of health, what we want to do is to do global dot health, okay, and this error over here will disappear. And now over here, we also want to do the same, global dot health. So now what happens is that this reference to the health is not anymore a only existing in the auto load one script but actually exists in this global script that once again is auto loaded and will will always exist in the different scenes and actually the result is quite similar in terms of the notes that are created as in the music in the remote tab we see this global node that as you can see is just a, a blank node okay is the this is this type of node that is the base class for all scene objects and in this node the only thing that they have is these members basically the, the variable that they have in this case health and also it has the script it itself that we have created um so now i can decrease the health okay and as you can see it is even updated over here i can go to the next scene and in this case health is 100 but when i press over here it is updated uh, correctly okay i can go to level 3 and initially it will be health 100 but when i press enter it is going to be 88 why is this happening because i am only uh, updating the uh, canvas layer text the, the health label when i am pressing the ui accept so i could actually just do it like this if i really wanted to and this will show the expected result so let's uh, leave it in 85 and when i go to scene 2 this is a still 85 let's decrease it a little bit more and in scene 3 this continues to be the same and as you can see in every single scene this is the same why because we always have in every single scene this global object okay that will always be in every single scene auto loading the data that uh, we require okay lastly i want to show you like let's say a, 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 even a more realistic example in a game uh, that i have created that as you can see well has like much more scenes much more scripts and more stuff so let's see here how in an actual project I have used auto load. Uh, so if I go to Globals, I have a lot of things. I have the exact same global script, okay, that if I go uh, and check it out, I just have a constant that is the default speed. 
and also the actual speed so this basically uh, moves the background the vehicles that then are spawned and move towards the player so that is the speed that is shared in for example the player you can see that when I, when I am actually moving I am using this global speed this is also used as I mentioned in the vehicles themselves over here they this uh, speed is used so there we have an actual usage then I also have this fade scene um, that is basically handling these fade transitions uh, I'm, I'm going to actually play the game here so that you can see everything in action but I just want to show you more more a realistic ways in which this can be used this has an animation player as you can see has a fade animation and it will also be able to play this animation backward to fade out the, the fade and also it has its own script it also has the music audio that is the, the music itself okay this is the same example that we saw it has a music itself and lastly we have the UI audio that is quite similar to the music uh, but in this case it is just a UI audio um, so let me play it here for you so that you understand what this actually is so what happens is that I actually want to play this UI audio in different places I want to play it uh, in the main scene when the game over buttons are pressed when I press the restart I want to play this sound when I press the menu I want that sound to be played and I also want to play it in my menu scene okay when I when I press the play button I also want to play this sound that's why as I had to play this sound in both the menu and the main scene one pretty easy way of doing that would be with the auto load and now let's see all this in action uh, I will just uh, disable here the music once again so that it doesn't bother us a lot but we can actually see this in action so in the remote tab over here we see a different auto loads we see the global itself okay we see the fade that is going to be handling these scene transitions that I will show you in a second and we have basically the music audio scene and the UI audio scene by the way you can see um, how when we auto load a scene uh, we have this icon over here and this global as, as it is just a script it doesn't have that icon just for you to know so when I press play the fade is actually going to be happening so this is handled by this node and well here then the, the game um, is actually happening okay and here the UI audio is going to be playing a vital role because there the, the UI audio was played and over here it was played uh, again so there you have everything how how everything is actually connected and used in some kind of real project and by the way I explained all this actually how to create this game more information on auto load and also more information on more topics about Godot in my uh, course if you are serious about leveling up your Godot skills, check out my course. In less than 6 hours, you'll master Godot fundamentals while building this amazing project. Links in the description. See you there.